Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? My name is ActG, and today we're going to be playing an old classic. And this time we are actually going to be playing a game that's developed by Insomniac. And if you couldn't tell already, yep. This is Spyro the Dragon, and this will be a 120% playthrough. So, let's go ahead and get started. In the world of dragons. Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful here in the five worlds, or is it six? For a dragon's age. We now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Gnork character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple. He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. That does it! Looks like I've got some things to do. Yeah, Spiral One hype. It's not Ganasty Gnork. Yeah, you don't pronounce the G. It's just simply Nasty Nork. And now the adventure begins. Our tasks for uh, Spyro is to rescue the dragons, collect the gems, and that's basically it. But our first dragon is right here. Here's Nestor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the artisan world. Then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. Now that's one out of the 80 dragons you must gain. Yeah, there's gems all over the place. So you can basically charge the uh, Norks to get the gems, or just simply flame them. Yeah, there's a special rule, cause... Yeah, actually... This is the PS2. I can't believe I still have my old PS2 after all these years. So I, and since the PS2 plays a PS1 game so good, I think I might as well play that. Here's Devlin, Delpin. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torch him. Keep your horns on, Spyro. You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Um... His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. All right, so what Delpin said Yes, yeah, Sparks represents your health. Sparks has uh, three different uh, colors depending on what health you're in. Yellow health means you're full. Then, uh, if you get hit, he turns blue. Then green. Then he disappears. If you get hit one more time, then you're dead. You lose a life. Here's Tomas. Hey, Spyro! Press the jump button twice to glide. And, and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. Yeah, there's a lot to do in uh, Spyro the Dragon, and I think speaking of Spyro the Dragon, 
Yeah, there are rumors about a Spyro Trilogy remaster coming out. I just don't know if the rumors are 100% true, but I just hope that they are. I'm just really looking forward to see Spyro in HD. Are oh, you beating Spyro 1? 120%? Yeah, basically what Tomas is uh, talking about. Yeah, you can press the jump button again to glide. Yeah, by pressing the triangle button in midair, Spiral just does this weird drop. And I just honestly don't like the uh, drop function all that much. I just prefer the uh, hover feature in layer games. Oh, any percent, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be going for 120%. That means getting every gym and every dragon in the game. And of course, there's also one other collectible I should be getting 100% for. But, I'll get to that when it comes. Yeah, for me, I haven't played Spyro in uh, quite a bit of time, so I'm still getting used to the controls. In a little bit. I just find it awkward that I just can't control the camera with the R stick. I just have to use the R2 and L2 buttons. Yeah, this is probably glide where it's probably important to use the hover feature on. Oh, same with three. I'm guessing you probably didn't beat two, right? Richter's Rage. Alright, the sheep that you see here, they're fodder animals. If you flame or attack a fodder animal, then a butterfly comes out, and every time Sparks eats a butterfly, his health gets up by one. But of course, if you if you attack fire animal without Sparks, while Sparks is not there, then Sparks will magically appear being green. They'll go to blue, then yellow, depending on the butterflies eats. Flash, do that again! The artisan's boss is through a portal in the Dragon Mouth, but you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. Yeah, this is actually a pretty unique uh, doorway. I think that uh, the artisan's home and one other world in this game has has uh, levels that are the only worlds that have levels that open them up once you uh, clear other levels. Alright, and with this, we now have everything in the artisan's home. So, not bad. Yeah, of course, here's the balloonist right here, Marco. If you prove your worth by rescuing ten dragons, then you may use this balloon to fly to a new world. Yeah, we have to rescue ten dragons first. Yeah, hopefully that won't be a problem. So now we're ready to enter the first official level of the game, Stone Hill. Yeah, Stonehill has uh, enemies that can hurt you in here. And also, while I'm at it, I might as well add uh, something else. Hold on.
yeah. I'm going to add the death counter. So every time I die, yeah, this death counter will go up. So hopefully it'll be uh, unique enough for this uh, playthrough. All right. Let's see what's in Stone Hill. Yeah, for Stone Hill, we have 200 gems and four dragons. Yeah, I just uh, don't uh, like, uh, yeah, the white. Yeah, for that. Okay, yeah. How many deaths I have an in insane? I think quite a bit. Yeah, I think probably too many to keep track of. Yeah, I think in uh, both the 100% uh, playthroughs and the original playthroughs. Uh, like, I just can't even uh, keep track of how many deaths that I ha did, uh, that I had during bo uh, both of those playthroughs for all three games. In the Insane Trilogy. 200 gems and 4 dragons. <sighs> yeah, this is probably unprofessional of me. I should have prepared this stuff, yeah, I think before. Yeah, I knew I was going to do Spiral the Dragon, I just didn't know that I would do it today. Yeah, I go down the well, and, well, we have a secret area with a dragon and a locked chest. Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. When he eats butterflies, he stays strong. Like me. Uh, sure. Yeah, basically what Gavin tells us, eat butterflies, restore health. Yeah, I'd just rather attack the rams by just flaming them. It has a nice range to it. I'd just rather be safe than sorry here. Yeah, metal chests like this, you cannot flame. You only charge them. Alright, now we have another dragon here, Lindar. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. Yeah, I'm just surprised Insane is uh, porting to what, uh, like, different consoles. I thought it would just be a PS4 exclusive. I'm just surprised it's on the, it's going on the Switch at all. Anyway, I might as well test the saving uh, feature, just to make sure that actually saves. Okay, good, it actually saves. At least that's one positive that I got. Alright, so let's explore a bit more. Yeah, I think uh, one negative thing I have to say about the Spiral of the Dragon yeah, series is that uh, if you miss just one gem, pretty much, or just, uh, well, a few gems, you might have to scour over and over to look for the, those few gems. And it can get pretty annoying. Oh, really? Xbox, one of PlayStation's competitors. And Nintendo, one of uh, PlayStation's competitors. Okay. Yeah, got the Insane Trilogy. After you freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya. Yeah, like uh, he said, you can just basically use this portal to return home. However, there is a much simpler way. You can actually just select exit the level and basically no consequence will happen. Of course, yeah, there's a whirlwind here and if you if you see whirlwinds like this, then something's pretty suspicious. So why don't we try going down here? 
why we're at the beach. And here we have a key to that locked chest. Yeah, probably need to be uh, more used to. Yeah, the uh, charging. So now let's go ahead and open that locked chest. Down in the well. Ten gems. Come on, fly up Spyro. Alright, there's one more area here left to explore. Let's through this way. Yeah, of course, the rams aren't the only enemies here. No, oh, we have the shepherds. Oh gosh, the shepherds. Don't underestimate the shepherds. They got quite a bit of range on them. Hey, Crimson, how you doing? Yeah, there's a reason uh, to an egg into a portal in World 1. Oh yeah, it's uh, probably to, well, unlock that dragon's head in uh, Arson's home. Yeah, Crimson, I basically got finished uh, Dagoropa 2 early, and so I decided to start uh, Spiral the Dragon. Alright, we're almost at the 200 gem mark. Right, and... Let's go up here. Oh yeah, this game brings back some good memories. I just hope that we get a remaster uh, trilogy soon. I just hope the rumors are true. Spyro, my friend, how about a hint on gliding? You bet! For the longest glide, press the X button at the top of a jump, and try pressing the triangle button to drop down in mid-flight. Yeah, this is pre-hover, so... Yeah, I just don't use the drop feature that much. I just use the hover more in uh, 2 and 3. Yeah, no more Malkuma. Yeah, that uh, evil bear. Yeah, I think from what I've seen of uh, V3, I think Malkuma does return in that game. I just don't know if uh, the person who's controlling Makuma will return as well, but we'll get to V3 uh, when it comes down to it. Anyway, we have another enemy here. These freaking egg thieves. And I'll probably help if I don't fall off the co dang course. Oh, they're in the middle of a development. Okay. Oh, and here's something. So is so oh, oh, wait, no. That's pretty embarrassing. Dang it. I was going to show that there was a, a hidden wall down there, but... Ah, crud. That's an embarrassing first death right down there. Ugh. I was going to show that there are hidden walls. That was an embarrassing first death, but yeah, there are hidden walls through some of these places, and yeah, that was probably not the best, uh, location. <sighs> that was rather embarrassing. <sighs> that was rather embarrassing of me. Anyway, yeah, there's the next, uh, collectible, the dragon eggs. And I think once you collect a dragon egg, it shows you right on the inventory screen. Yeah, this area... Ooh. Yeah. 
this, you, you can easily lose track of gems here. And the camera does not want to cooperate at times. Alright. Ah, uh, six more gems. Oh, you would, uh, gimmick. Yeah, I think I heard that Activision is, uh, supposed to be helping out with the, uh, Spiral Trilogy. At least that's what I've heard. Alright, well, there's a red gem, but I'm either missing two reds or green right now. And I bet it's up here. Up, oh, two reds, there we go. Yeah, that was embarrassing first death. I was just trying to show off the invisible wall technique. And, well... It backfired to me. Uninteresting when you return to a level or homeworld and attack enemies. You get to collect these pearl things. When you collect enough pearls to encircle Spiral's head, you get an extra life. And rare, very rarely, enemies will drop extra lives as well, but only when you have already gotten their gems. Alright then. So the next level is Dark Hollow. I mean, when the GameCube came out, pretty much, yeah, I think pretty much everybody was surprised that uh, we have Sonic on a Nintendo console. What madness is this? Anyway, welcome to Dark Hollow. So, we have 100 gems, 3 dragons, no dragon eggs. Anyway, here we have uh, the Norks who have shields. You can't flame the shields. So you can only charge them. And yeah, we got another locked chest down here. Yeah, your sword and shield are not going to help Norks. Anyway, for the big guys, yeah, you cannot simply charge them. You only have to flame them. So, what happens if you be an enemy with both of the traits, metal, and big? Well, you gotta find some other way to defeat them. Oh, it's you! I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course, they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Yeah, most of the time, these small norks will have the metal armor. But there are some large norks out there who do have no armor, and you gotta find some unique ways of dealing with them. Like right here. Here we have a big nork with no armor. Well, partially no armor. Yeah, the backside is exposed. Yeah, I think Dark Hollow's music, it's... Actually, pretty good. And also, yeah, Spyro can't swim yet, so avoid touching the water. Psst, Spyro, want to know a secret? Use the triangle button when you want to zoom in and look around. Oh, your secret's safe with me. Yeah, basically, what he told you is you can press the triangle button to just look at from behind Spiral's head. I really don't use it very much. It really doesn't have much purpose in this game. It has much more purpose in Spiral 2 and 3. Anyway, we got the key to the chest here. So let's just uh, get on out of here and go to the locked chest. Yeah, 
got no gimmick. <laughs> Of course, you can also press the X button to skip the cutscene of the key going into the chest. Okay. Well, that was a bullying miss. Yeah, of course, you can use uh, Flame Breath to interact with some of the environments, like, of course, these you know, log sticks in order to create a flame. I don't know what purpose it uh, serves much, but uh, it's a nice sneak effect. Yeah, of course, extra lives usually come in like these uh, purple boxes. Alright, we're almost done with this level. Just 15 more gems and a dragon to get. Yeah, Dark Hollow is not really that difficult overall. Alright, here we go, Darius. Big enemies like this Gnork with the club cannot be charged. But a quick flame, that should defeat them. It's not Gnork, it's Nork. And well, yeah, he just says, flame the big guys. Of course, you had to flame the big guys in order to get to this point. But there we go. And at this point... Yeah, we have enough dragons to move on to the next world. But of course, we still gotta finish up the Arson's homeland first before I can move on to the next world. So, let's go to the next level. Which is down here. Oh, that's interesting, gimmick. You bait B crashed to 100% about eight years ago. Yeah, of course, Spiral 2 Ripto's Rage is probably more improved than this one. It just pretty much set a new standard for Spiral games. Welcome to Town Square. 200 gems, 4 dragons, and we got an Egg Thief lurking about. All right, so we have Nils. Welcome to Town Square, Spyro. Begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bulls. Use the L2 and R2 buttons to get a good look. Yeah, sorry to hear about that, Crimson. Yeah, I think this is the first uh, Spyro game that I've played. Yeah, I think I played uh, 2 and 3 soon after. Yeah, I think 1 was a bit younger when I started playing uh, 2 and 3. I was a, I was so young that I was just terrified of pretty much the uh, first bosses, so I just uh, stopped playing for a little bit. But I think once I was older, yeah, now I knew how to deal with, with the bosses. I conquered, yeah, my fear, my younger fear. And here's Delvin. Thanks, Delvin. Spyro. <laughs> I had the worst itch on the tip of my wing. <laughs> Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing X at the very top of your jump? Yes, I did. Learned that from Stone Hill. Yeah, I think one negative so far. I think one negative about some of the dragons that you rescue. Yeah, many of them tend to have repeating advice. Yeah, that's because you can actually skip some le uh, levels in the world. So some of them essentially become hammered in. That's a fun, like, 
Okay, we get it. Well, I guess I touched the horn on that bull, so I got hit. That's just a weird hitbox. And well, here's the exit portal already. But we're still missing quite a bit of gems. Avalar. <laughs> Spyro, did you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief, and he's stolen a dragon egg. You've got to track him down and, and get that egg. Run, run! <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. Just by talking. You get winded just by talking a little bit. Okay. Of course, I see the egg thief right here, but the problem is, how do I get to him? Well, just do a little bit of gliding. And there we go. And try to be careful not to fall off here, because I don't think there are any invisible walls here. Case in point. Ugh. Ay ay ay. Oh, that's two embarrassing deaths now already. And I haven't I haven't even left world one. Oh, that's not saying a good omen. Yeah, it would probably help to jump before I can actually glide. And yeah, that flame breath ha does have qu uh, quite a bit of range. That's good, gimmick. I should probably play a little bit more cautiously, and well, I should not just, well, charge over cliff into water and die. And anyway, we have a new type of chest here. Yeah, this chest is actually kind of unique because with this chest, you have to flame breath multiple times in order to get the fan rotated enough to break the chest. And as you can just see, that flame, that fan can attack other chests and enemies. So that is a very nice chest, but it's kind of a bit random, kind of a bit... Yeah, it's a bit random, unpredictable. And I was going to do another countdown for this, but I decided not to. You'll see what I mean. Thank you for releasing me! Yeah, this phrase gets used over and over in this game. Thank you for releasing me! And well, yeah, we got everything in Town Square. So, let's go ahead and return home. So we're almost done with this world. We've got a couple more levels left and we're done with the Arson's Land. Alright, now that we uh, cleared the level, yeah, this level opened up, but here's something interesting I wanted you to see. You can actually replay some of the Dragon's cutscene, and this is probably the only Dragon cutscene that, well, changes from the same dragon. Cool Flash! Do that again! The Artisan's boss has threw a portal behind me. You can challenge him now, if you feel you are ready. Yes, because we have a boss here. Yeah, every world has a boss. And while the bosses in this game, they play more like levels with a tougher enemy at the end. So, let's face against the first boss, Toasty. And what's unique about this, we actually say confronting here instead of just uh, entering whatever level name that is. 
Yeah, Toasty, I have some really, really bad memories with this, uh... Yeah, with this one, because... All of these enemies right down here, and I'm not talking about the Shepherds. Yeah, the Sheepdogs. They are quite annoying. But, a simple, uh, barrel roll by pressing either the L1 or the R1 buttons will cause you to avoid the sheepdogs, but only at the right time. Yeah, the sheepdogs, they are quite annoying. Yeah, because I exit through a portal, and that count is clearing a level. Also, the sheepdogs will try to attack you if you get too close to them. So it's best to try to keep your distance. Oh, and I forgot to check uh, this uh, boss's uh, statistics on the inventory. 100 gems and one dragon. Do a barrel roll! Once you know how to deal with the sheepdogs, they're really not too bad. They're just really annoying if you don't know what to do, because one thing about most of these boss levels, there are no father animals. Not a single one within most of these boss levels. I think there's like one or two boss levels that have father animals, but I think that's just about it. Alright, we're about ready to head up to Toasty. But first, a dragon. Nevin. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on! I think I smell a barbecue! Be careful, Spyro! This boss has many tricks up his sleeve. Hey, that just kind of hurts, gimmick. Never use an exit portal of a speed race. And, well, I paid for it. Anyway, here's Toasty, this jack-o'-lantern uh, Grim Reaper. It's just pretty sad if the sheepdogs are more threatening than the boss. And if you take a look, yeah, you can see a sheep on stilts. It's just pretty sad if pretty much the fodder enemies, or well, the sheepdogs, are more threatening than the boss. Yeah, for this third form, yeah, the sheep can actually attack. Not used for dealing with two sheep dogs. So I got hit. Alright, hopefully there's four more gems over here. And there we go. We are done with Toasty. So, since we don't see any more portals in here, you may think that we're done with arsons. Actually, no we're not, because there is actually a secret level hidden in the arsons' homeland. And while well, the way to open it is not said until you reach the third world. However, yeah, the way to open it is to actually jump on these stones in sort of like an M fashion. Once you do that, 
the way to the bonus level opens up. Yeah. Sunny Flight. Yeah, this is a flight level, and even though it's early, this is one of the tougher flight levels. Yeah, the way to deal with flight levels, you have to fulfill specific tasks. There are four tasks you must perform, each having eight items. You get 80 gems for completing a task, and you get an extra 80 gems once you complete all every task in one clean run. Yeah, I gotta be careful here. Yeah, this is arguably one of the tougher of the flight levels. This is one of the tougher flight levels, even though it appears so early on. Uh, doing good so far. worried about the time a little bit. Ah, this one. Ah. Come on, I know you're there. Alright, one more plane here. And go through the rest of the arches, and I'm done. There we go, plenty of time to spare. 16.2 seconds, not bad. Not bad if I do say so myself. Oh, sorry, 60 gems. Yeah, I was thinking more about pretty much the sequels uh, where it's 80 gems. And the time attack eh, just really serves no real purpose, only for personal records. Yeah, anyway, I seem to be running out of time during this stream, so I think this might be a good place to uh, call off the stream for today. So, before I leave the, the stream, anything you want to say to the chat? Uh, gimmick and Crimson? Oh boy, yeah, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, will the flight level fails count in the death counter? Well, even though I didn't really die, um... I'm just debating if I do something that does... If I do something that looks like a death in, in any other case, that might add to the death counter for sure, but... If I run out of time, yeah, that's going to be the interesting thing. Yeah, that's going to be the interesting thing, if I run out of time. I think if I do run out of times, yeah, if I do fail during uh, the uh, flight levels, yeah, it will count toward the death counter. I just cannot believe I died those two times really embarrassing. <sighs> It's just really embarrassing for me. Yeah, have a good night to you too, uh, Crimson and uh, Gimmick. Well, that's it uh, for this stream. So thank you all for watching, and next time, we'll explore yeah, the second world of Spiral the Dragon. Until then, fairly well. Good night, everybody.